Hello friends and welcome to Life in Envelopes. I am Jennifer Bleacher. I am so excited for today's video because in today's video we're going to be setting up my budget for the month of December and this is the first month since getting divorced that I'm able to share my entire budget with you guys. Um, after my frustration with trying to figure out how to share my, my budget with you guys last month, things kept changing week to week and I finally just threw up my hands and gave up. Um, I talked to David, my ex-husband, and he and I discussed some options and we came to the conclusion that the best thing for me to do would be to share with you guys the entire budget without income. That way you can see the whole process of setting up a budget and then checking in week to week to see if I'm staying on track. So I'm so glad to be in this position because it's gonna make my life so much easier. It's gonna make budgeting so much easier and sharing my budget with you so much easier. So I'm excited to do that. There will be a Q and A section at the end of this video so make sure and stick around to the end for that Q&A time otherwise let's just go ahead and jump in and get started okay guys I'm gonna to start today by getting all of my stickers set up so stickers are totally not necessary for budgeting they just make it a whole lot more fun and interesting and keeps me motivated so the sticker kit I'm using is the budget mom budget by paycheck workbook I'm using the complete pack in December 123 I have the monthly spread, the thick washi, four budget headers, the meal plan kit, four cash envelope headers, four expense tracker headers, the fifth week add-on, and then the where did my money go the end of the month pages, page one and two. Okay, so I am just going to fast forward this part for you <laughs> and play some nice music. So I'll check back in with you as soon as everything is all set up. Merry Christmas, baby. Rain is coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the presents, making sure you've been behaving okay. Merry Christmas, honey. Yeah. The snowman's dusting off his hat. On the show for everybody to give them a smile that lasts another year. There's something that okay, so let's do a quick flip through. So here is the monthly spread. I did have to shorten the washi here to include the 31st day of December. Here is my budget category breakdown. I color code my budget categories, and this is how I this is the key actually, not the breakdown, the key. Um, to that. I did, added the December header and the 2023 header. Then I have budget and cash envelopes headers on each page for five pages, I think. I'm going to just start with one monthly budget this month, and hopefully that's all I need to use, but, um, but I want to have the other ones open just in case things don't go well and I need to redo my budget. So then I have five expense trackers set up, one for each week, and then we have the debt payment plan here, the monthly net worth tracker, the where did my money go monthly budget category breakdown, the where did my money go monthly debt and savings breakdown, and then the where did my money go monthly spending comparison. And then finally we have the meal plan page. Now this last blank page, I'm going to, to use for my um, budget check-in. Now I could, let me show you. I designed these stickers to fit in this square here actually. So I could use this for my monthly budget and then each budget afterwards, I could put this down here and use that page for my check-in. It will fit, but um, I like the idea of just having it all set up on one page. So I'm gonna do that now. So my plan is to do a budget check-in once a week and I'm gonna check in on my variable expenses and make sure that I'm staying on track. So I'm gonna check in for groceries, gas for the car, 
household expenses and spending money. So I'm gonna, my goal is to check in every Tuesday. So that will be December 5th, December 12th, December 19th, and December 26th. Okay, let's head back to the budget. Okay, so the way I'm doing my budget for December is I have one monthly budget and then I'm gonna do those weekly check-ins um, on that final page. So because this is for the whole month, for the date range, I'm just gonna write the name December because it's for the whole month. Okay, so just as a reminder, I can't share income for me or for David, but I can share everything else about the budget. So let's go ahead and start with fixed expenses. So we have our mortgage. And that's going to be $13.35. Next is car insurance. And that is $132. Then it, next we have internet. And that is $109. Then we have cell phones. And that is $83. Water and electricity. They are one bill together. And that is $291. Then we have gas for the house and that is $40 a month. Next is my car payment, and that's $118. Then we have loan number two, and that is 568. Garbage, and that is 25. And then we're currently streaming, uh, we have two streaming services currently. We have Netflix and HBO. We pay 17 for Netflix, and we pay 15 for HBO. Okay, that is it for our fixed expenses. Let me add this all together and see how much that is all together. That comes to $2,733. Okay, moving down here to variable expenses. So we have groceries, and this is for the whole month. So for the whole month, we have a budget of $800. Then we have gas for our car, and our monthly budget is $40. Next is household expenses, and our monthly budget is $200. Then we have spending money, and all together, everyone's spending money together comes to 204. Okay, so that's it for variable expenses. So let's see how much that is all together. That is 1244. Okay, moving up here to sinking funds. So we're going to be starting our sinking funds again. First, we have Christmas, and we're going to put $40 a month towards Christmas. Then we have car registration, and we're gonna put $50 a month towards that. Next is vacation, and we're gonna put $80 a month towards that. Next is car maintenance, and $50 goes towards that. Then there is Amazon Prime, and there's $60 there, and Sam's Club. This is for our annual membership, and Amazon Prime is our, also our an, annual membership, and that's $10 a month that we save for that. Okay, so let me add all that together. So that comes to $290. Okay, so next is extra debt. We're not gonna we're not gonna schedule a, an amount to go towards that. Um, it, we we are working on paying off extra debt, but we're doing it through our savings. So I'm gonna come down here to our extra savings. These are our savings challenges that we're going to do. And um, as far as the budget goes, I'm budgeting that I'll be able to save an extra two forty each month uh, for those savings challenges. So that's the monthly total, but how much we actually get to save will depend on how our spending goes. So that's kind of, that's gonna be our most like variable item on our budget. 
Okay, so that is our budget for the month. When I come back next week, what we'll do is we will check in for any bills that have come out and we will also check in for our variable expenses. So I hope you'll come back next week and join me for that. I'll also be doing a Q&A at the end of next week's video. So if you have any questions for me, please put it in the, in the comment section of this video. Please write question at the beginning of your comment. That will help me know like that's a question you want me to answer and that you're comfortable with me reading your question out loud on the next video. Okay friends, thank you so much for watching. Let's head over to the Q&A time right now. Okay, before I do the first question, I just wanna let you guys know, as I'm scrolling through here, I just look at the first word, and if it says question, then I read the question. So if you put question somewhere else in your comment, I might miss it, most likely I will miss it. Um, so I never like intentionally don't answer your questions. If you ask a question that I'm uncomfortable answering, I go ahead and read the question out loud to you guys in this, in this time, and I just let you know I'm not comfortable answering that question, but I'm never intentionally like skipping over your questions. So if I miss it, it's just human error. It's nothing like personal. Okay, so this first question comes to plan to be booked by Alicia Allen. First, hi Jennifer. Hi Alicia. My question is for Christmas. In the past, you would have saved up and got presents for from both you and David. How are you handling Christmas? How are you handling Christmas this year? Is he contributing to half of anything you buy or buying his own gifts for the boys? If not, maybe you should put $60 to use in the savings challenges towards Christmas so you reach your goal. Just for the next few weeks. Take care. Okay, so um the plan was we would both get the boys our own Christmas gifts, but our boys have expensive tastes. <laughs> so both boys asked for just one thing and it was pricey, both of the things they asked for. So instead of buying separate gifts for the boys, David and I talked about it and we decided to get them what they actually want and split the cost. So that's how we're handling it this year. We'll have to just see in future years how we want to handle it. Okay, so this next question is from Novice Stitcher. Have you, cr I have created a budget for myself multiple times. Each month I tell myself I will stick to it and save some money. Each month I end up spending all my money, including maxing out my credit cards. Do you have any advice for the weak willed? So if I had the answer to this, I would be a millionaire, just so you know. <laughs> but <laughs> if I had a good solid answer that would fit everybody, I would be rich. <laughs> but um, what I can tell you is when I started my budgeting journey, the number one thing that helped make a difference for me personally was starting sinking funds. I, I just felt like every Christmas, I went further and further in debt. Like I never could never get ahead. So my first sinking fund was Christmas. And then as time went on, I added more and more sinking funds. And the more sinking funds I had, the more control I had over my money throughout the year. And um, so what sinking funds are, in case you don't know, is you think about these major expenses that happen once or twice a year, and then you save up for them all year long, small amounts of money all year long, so that when those expenses come up and happen, you have the money available to do that. That way you don't have to use your credit cards to um, cover those expenses. So for me, that was the biggest thing. So maybe that will help you, I don't know. Good luck. <laughs> this is a journey that we're all on and we're all trying to get better at. Okay, this next question is from Catherine Moses, Moses 6390. Do you mind sharing what foundation you are using in this video? Your complexion is beautiful and your skin is glowing. I love your videos. You are a very brave and strong woman to share all your struggles with budget and debt numbers. I appreciate it so much. I know I feel so encouraged knowing others are going through the same money struggles as I am. Please keep sharing and thank you so much. Thank you so much for all of that. Yes, let me get, grab it, I'll tell you what it is. I'll show you what it is. So it's by this company, Laura Geller. Let's see if I can, Laura Geller. And this is called the Bake Balance and Brighten and the color I use is Fair. I have this and I also bought the brush that goes with it and I actually need to restock it pretty soon. I got this I think about a year ago and I love it. It's just, this is what it looks like. You can see I've hit pan. You can see the little dots. But um, yeah, it's, I love it. I would highly recommend it. It's especially great I think on maturing skin. I'm 46 years old and um, 
I feel like it just smooths everything out. <laughs> Fills in all the, all the wrinkles. <laughs> okay, this next question is from Sincerely Casey. Hi Jennifer, first of all, I can't wait to talk to you again. Oh, me too. We have to get something on the calendar. I am hoping we can reconnect after the holidays. It has been a bit crazy here. I did have a comment about the budget. I was wondering if you could separate the fixed from the variable and track the variable spending from week to week, like you used to do before the monthly calendar. Also, if you are able to track the debts and update on how these are lowering. Not sure if this is an option within your current situation. I am sure you will figure this out in time and it will make sense at the end. Best wishes and talk soon. So yeah, that's the plan now. Now that I'm going, now that I can share all of my budget information, I'll be able to go back to sharing the variable, the expenses week to week for the variable spending and like, are we staying on track? Are we going over? Are we staying under? Like that kind of thing. And I also want to get back to sharing my debt numbers with you at the end of each month and show you like how we're paying off debt. Okay, this next question is from Honey Bunny Budgets. Regarding your international shipping cost, you touched on in a previous video. Could you offer your international customers a digital version of your kits that they can cut themselves? Okay, so a couple things here, just to fill you guys in. All of a sudden, so it usually costs me about $20 to ship to Australia, England, um, where else? New Zealand, those are places I typically ship to and it usually costs around $20. All of a sudden, it's jumped up to $60 and it cost me $60 just to send a small little envelope and I don't know why and I don't know if it's gonna go back down after the holidays, I'm not sure, but I can't afford that. So, and I don't wanna pass that $60 cost onto my customers. So um, I have stopped international shipping for the time being until I can either figure out a cheaper way to ship things or it goes back down again. So that's the international thing. Um, oh, so digital versions. So I have a very special cutting machine. And if I were to send, if I were to sell, sell the digital versions of this, it people wouldn't be able to use them. You'd have to have this software and this cutting machine and it just wouldn't, wouldn't work for you. When I had silhouettes and I did silhouettes, it was very easy to have digital, the digital option, but I can't have a silhouette, um, the computer software, the silhouette on my computer with this. It's a parent company, but they're different and they like, they fight each other. The, the um, technology fights each other and they get all messed up. So I can't have silhouette software on my computer. And if I were to set up a whole different silhouette program, and um, on like a different computer, like we're talking about hours and hours and hours of work, which would not be helpful um, money-wise. Like it would, it would not be worth it. It would, it would be hours of work with very, very little return on my investment of my time and energy. Okay, this next question is from Adventure to More Money. Are you meeting your weekly income or do you have to dip into your savings? Do you have a savings? Um, so it depends. So we have a cushion. Sometimes we have to dip into it. Sometimes we don't have to. Sometimes we have extra. So then the extra just goes to back to the cushion. So build up the cushion again. So it varies from situation to situation. Okay, this is from Maria Moorefield, 9706. For the miscellaneous money you each contribute, what is included? I would think toilet paper and dish soap for the house would be included, but each of your lotion, lotions and shampoos, etc., would not, and you would need to use personal funds. Is that how you are handling it? Did I miss your plan to pay back the business and emergency funds? I agree with others that have commented and would focus on Christmas for the next month, then clothing or savings payback, whichever you decide is the next most important. I would be interested in other people's budgets and maybe you could set it up and then close it out and show how they did. The budget mom used to do viewers budgets and it seemed very popular. Okay, so lots of things here, let's see. Um, so there's a household budget and there's money that goes into that and uh, it does cover, it covers toilet paper, dish soap, it also covers like lotions and shampoos and things like that, it covers all of that. But if there's anything special that I want, like let's say like that foundation, for example, that's not a household expense, that's expense, that's something special for me, so I would have to pay for that with my own spending money. And um, yeah, so I hope I answered that part. <laughs> 
okay, do we have a plan to pay back the business and emergency funds? I'm not sure what you mean by business. I'm sorry if I'm forgetting something, but the emergency fund. Oh yeah, I know we do need to, yeah, we had to use our emergency fund. We had to use, so we had a thousand dollar emergency fund. We used 600 to um, pay for our house repair. So we do need to pay that back. So we do need to come up with a plan to pay that back because we currently only have $400 in our emergency fund and we want to get that back up to 1,000. Okay, and then the other people's budgets, it's, that's no longer an issue. So I had, I had brought up the idea of when I was struggling to share my own budget of maybe I just need to share other people's numbers, but now that I can share my budget, um, I don't have to worry about sharing, like going into a different direction and sharing other people's numbers. So I will continue to share my own numbers. And that's also a lot of feedback I got from people was they would rather just see my numbers. They don't really care about other people's numbers. They're here to see what I'm doing with my numbers. So. Um, yeah, so I will just be continuing to share my numbers going forward now that I can share them. Okay, this next question is from Eclectic Rhapsody8693. I know you have a lot on your plate, but have you thought about creating a channel or segment specific to homeschooling? You just seem so excited when you talk about it. May maybe do a children's book share like you did for October for your son's homeschool track. That was interesting. Could you do a children's gift idea for the viewpoint of an educator? Also, are you refrained from sharing your spend down on groceries because it is part of the agreement? I liked the weekly check-ins. That was helpful. I must say, you've been very creative about your content in light of your divorce agreement, limiting to what you can share. You are a strong and courageous woman with the endless opportunities ahead of you. Okay, thank you. So um, I have thought about the whole, like doing a whole like homeschool channel, because I do, I, I love talking, I love lesson planning and finding materials and sharing what we're doing in homeschool. Um, the thing is, is it's, it's just time. Uh, homeschool channels don't do well like they don't get a lot of views <laughs> they don't get a lot of subscribers um, and I every every decision I make I have to think about the amount of time I'm going to have to invest into that uh, doing that and is it gonna pay off because my time is so precious and so limited and so tight already um, otherwise I would totally do it because I love it so in the meantime I'm just gonna keep sharing like a little bit of homeschool here and there in my weekly vlogs because um, because I like to talk about it. I like to share what I'm doing. Okay, so the grocery thing doesn't matter really anymore because I'm gonna get to share that going forward. I think, I think I answered all your questions. Okay, so this next question is from Evie Peters one Can you do an office tour or how to start an Etsy sticker shop? Love your channel, you're amazing. Sure, I can definitely do that. I'll do an office tour for you guys sometime. I'll put that into one of my vlogs. Or maybe I'll just do a whole separate video. Yeah, I love that idea. And um, how to start an Etsy sticker shop, I love that idea too. Those are two things I need to write down so I don't forget. So when I'm looking for, like when I'm trying to think of um, video ideas in the future, I can come back to those. So I need to, after this, I need to go write them down so I don't forget. <laughs> okay, so this next question is from Everyday Blue 7798 how do you deal with the ex-husband and dividing up chores? Does he cook his own meals? Does he clean up after himself? Also, I don't think I'd be interested in other people's budgets. Yeah, a lot of people said that they wouldn't be interested. Maybe you can just do a goal of your end, your end of the budget. Okay, and then she goes into a whole scenario that we don't need to worry about because I can share my budget with you guys now. So let's go back to the chores question. Um, so I have answered this before, but I'll, I don't mind answering it again. Um, just because, you know, if, if just because I answered it once doesn't mean that everyone heard the answer. So here it is. David has his own room, his own bedroom, his own bathroom, and he is responsible for keeping those clean. I have my own room and my own bathroom, and I'm responsible for keeping those clean. And then all common areas of the house, so the, the living room, dining room, kitchen, every family member, so that's David, me, Jacob, Logan, all of us are responsible for keeping things picked up and tidy. Um, if you use a dish, you wash a dish. If you mess up the counters, you wipe down the counters. The only extra things that I do in the house are like dusting, and cleaning the floors and then um, everyone does their own laundry and David still takes care of the yard so like does all the mowing and all that so that's how we've d divided up the chores okay this next question is from Kim Rodriguez 6854 um, loan number two on your budget will that be paid off anytime soon if so 
would that change your contribution? Oh, that's a good question. So I think we have, it's actually, so we have this agreement that we have to stay here uh, for six years or um, we can give the other person six months notice. So there is that out, but the loan will be paid off in approximately the same amount of time. So, but if we did pay it off early, yeah, that would change both of our contributions. So yeah, something to think about. Okay, so this next question is from Linda Starr, 6569. Can we, your viewers, share our budgets once a month? So one person will do July and another person do August. So yes, Linda, that's what I was originally thinking when I thought I will do other people's budgets. I was thinking um, like one person per month. But now I'm gonna be sharing my own budget so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so this next question is from CB9060. Hi Jennifer, instead of itemizing the budget that you are jointly responsible for, could you just write fixed expenses and the total amount budgeted for that and then tick off that you have contributed your agreed amount during your budgeting closeout? So if I were still sharing the way I was before, I think that would have been a lot easier <laughs> to do it that way for sure. Also, regarding the car payments and upkeep, it is my understanding that David doesn't drive. Please correct me if I'm wrong. If David or you decide to leave your current arrangement and sell the house, will you also have to sell the vehicle? So I answered her already in the comments here, but that has changed because I met with my lawyer this week. We were just doing more finalizing of the paperwork and it turns out because David doesn't drive, when we go our separate ways, I get to take the car, even though we've both contributed. To the, to the payment of it, um, he agreed to let me take the car. Okay, so this next question is from Maria Rubio Meadows, 2538. Hey Jennifer, can you substitute since you were or are a teacher at least two or three times a week? So can I? Yes. Do I have time to do that? No. If I did have time, like if sales like were to slow way down, that would be a great thing for me to do. Um, I don't really want to go back into the classroom. I would rather do something different. Um, I just, I spent 20 years in the classroom and I'm just kind of over it. <laughs> I want to do something different. But that is, um, that is always an option of something I can fall back on. Okay, this next question is from Robert Farrell, 4228. So the Etsy shop that is selling the budget stuff, do you or David receive the monies for that product? So the budget shop is mine. The sticker shop is mine. The shop I did with David was um, the designing patterns. It was very briefly something that we started to do before everything went down with the divorce. Um, he has taken that over and he still, as, as far as I know, he still makes designs to sell on Etsy, but I don't receive any money from that. That's a side hustle that he does on his own now. Okay, so this next question is from, oh, I hope I say your name right. Lainey C, JJ 60 S. Are you only staying in the house with David for financial reasons? Do you really need to stay in the house together for Logan? It's quite confusing and it appears as if you are sacrificing a lot. Wouldn't it be better for you to move on, become independent as a single woman and a parent? I am also confused as to why you would want to keep the same last name as your sons now that you are divorced. Okay, so a lot of questions there. So let's just go back to the beginning. Are you staying in the house with David for financial reasons? Oh wait, are you only staying in the house with David for financial reasons? No. Do you really need to stay in the house together for Logan? Yes. It's quite confusing and it appears as if you're sacrificing a lot. Wouldn't it be better for you to move on, become independent as a single woman and a parent? So, <sighs> trying to figure out how to, um, so I'm sorry you're confused, and my answer might not clear up your confusion. I just, I think going through what I've recently gone through, I'm realizing that things aren't so black and white, and there's a lot of gray in the world. Like I, I had this vision of this is what marriage is supposed to look like, and how long it's supposed to last, and what it's supposed to, and like what you're supposed to do. So my camera just overheated. <laughs> So I had to like let it cool off. Um, so we were answering um, the question, do you, let's see. It's quite confusing and it appears as if you are sacrificing a lot. Wouldn't it be better for you to move on, become independent as a single woman or a parent? I am also confused as to why you'd want to keep the same last name as your sons now that you are divorced. Okay, so um, 
what I was trying to say, I think when the camera cut cut off, is that something I've learned since going through this whole divor divorce process is there's not just one like cut and dry way of doing things. Like this is the way it goes, this is the way it doesn't go. Like there's this whole range and spectrum of the way you can make range your um, divorce and your your situation is completely unique to you and your partner and your family and um, so while I originally thought when I was when the whole divorce process started I just assumed I would be going my own way and he'd be going his own way I never even thought that this was an option until you know getting lawyers involved and doing everything and realizing oh this is an option too um, there's also something called nesting and that is where the kids stay in the house and the parents come and go um, so on my days I would be here on the non David's days sorry I could just have to sneeze sorry <laughs> So then on David's days, he would be here. So that was another option, but we decided to go with the whole roommate situation instead. And um, the main reason is for Logan. Our youngest son, Logan, has a, a, several medical issues that we sh that we have to help him with. That's why he's homeschooled. He's homeschooled for medical reasons. And um, not disrupting his environment is the biggest thing that David and I could do for him. David and I unfortunately can't be married to each other anymore. That's just not going to work for us. But still being here, taking care of Logan and giving him the best and stablest environment that we can is something that both of us can do and both of us want to do for him. Um, as far as the last name thing, so I went through some different things. First, I thought about going back to my maiden name and I hated my maiden name. <laughs> it was, it's a terrible maiden name, you guys. My maiden name is Whitehead. That's just so you, in case you don't know what that is, that's a pimple. <laughs> that's my maiden name. And I was teased about my maiden name relentlessly when I was a kid, even as a teenager, you know, like people would tease me about it. Whitehead's not a cool name. Uh, so I, then I thought, well, maybe I'll take my parents' name. So my mom is remarried to my stepdad and they have a cool last name. Their last name is Vipond and that's Logan's middle name. And I thought, okay, that would be cool. I, I, I thought about doing that. But then I went back and I thought about my 20 years as a teacher and seeing parents who didn't have the same last name as their kids and just the extra hoops they would have to jump through and the extra things they would have to go through. And I realized with, with Logan's health situation and the number of phone calls I have to make on his behalf, the number of appointments I have to make on his behalf, the paperwork I have to fill out on his behalf, and I have to sign everything with my name on it, it is just so much easier to have the same last name as Logan. That I don't have to jump through those extra, those extra hoops of proving that I am his parent parent um, in addition to all the hoops I have to jump through for his medical condition as it is. So I ultimately decided just to keep the last name and um, I don't know if I even will have the option to change it sometime in the future if I want to but um, but at this point in time it just makes sense with with everything I have to do for Logan I need to have the same last name as him. It just will make my life and his life so much easier. Okay, friends, so that is it for this week's questions. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If I missed your question, it was totally not on purpose. Feel free to ask it again if I missed your question. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all again next time. Bye, everyone. Merry Christmas, baby. Rain is coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the presents, making sure you've been behaving okay. Merry Christmas, honey. Yeah. The snowman's dusting off.